So welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today I'm sat down with Mark Herman, and we're at uh, BPA's World Board Gaming Championships 2018. And Grant's not here, uh, but we sat down with Mark, myself, Grant, and Mo from Maurice's Game Table, and we played Mark's brand new design. Well, Brent, Mark and Jeff's new design. And Jeff Engelstein uh, co-designed this game. This is Versailles 1919. So I want to have Mark kind of walk us through what this game is and what we can expect from it. So let's start with how this game even came to be. Well, actually, I was there's a store in New York uh, where a good friend owns it for like you know 30 years uh, called the Complete Strategist, and um, I was in there. I see a guy buying a copy of Pericles, and it turns out it's Jeff Engelstein. <laughs> so we obviously started talking to each other. I had met him before, and we were talking, and he said, "I see you doing a Versailles game." So am I. He said, why don't we do one together? I said, fine. <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> There's the big negotiation and, and, and happenstance. Well, that's, that, that's cool. I know you walked through kind of bringing those two games together. This final, well, I say final product. This is the game that we play. This is a prototype copy, right? It's prototype, but I would say it's already above 90% on done. Now I'm just, Jeff and I are still... Speaking, some of the, as you saw, some of the numbers on some of the strategy cards are a little bit need to be toned down, but the mechanics are set. There's no, in fact, if anything, I'm simplifying at this point mechanics to stuff's coming out, nothing's going back in. So I want to keep this game under two hours, and I think we're kind of about there. So, and we'll even have an option for a shorter game, like you just take out more issue cards. Right, right. Uh, I have to think of a way to do that so it doesn't unbalance a particular session, though, if you take out too many. But we'll work. Those are all just details. That's just development stuff, so it'll be fine. So this game is, you can see, a lot of different cards, tiles, and pieces. Um, run us through kind of what a game tile looks like, what type of a game this well, let me, is. Well, let me start with the overall concept. So imagine you are, again, very much the first-person narrative. So you're Woodrow Wilson, you're Italy's Prime Minister Orlando, you're Francis Clemenceau, or you're England's Lloyd George. And the Japanese are sort of like a minor character in this in this story. And I, I don't know if it's going to show up in the video, but over here you have the, the room where they're actually sitting, but it's not Churchill, by the way, I just want to be clear, but there is a room, and at any given time there are two issues on the table, and there's an event card, there's a person in the room with you, in this case, whoever it is, I can't see it from here. And what happens is, these are the issues that can get settled, which is how you get points and generate activity onto the board. Once that uh, issue gets settled, you're going to move new issues in and new people into the room. Which is, and so settling an issue is how you change the game state. And, as I was, and one of the big things is you don't always have to settle your issue. You will settle somebody else's issue because it might benefit you in the global vision with the strategy cards that give you points. So I might say, I want Alexander to have this issue, and I did once because I wanted him to make Japan happy. Uh, unfortunately, he did not choose to make Japan happy, but other than that, but so you actually cause people, and you get more of your cues back if you do that, to their advantage, and then when you settle an issue, you get to choose how the board evolves what issues are on the table, who's in the room, and all that kind of stuff. Something that I thought was really interesting is that it, it's a game that simulates the negotiation around the Treaty of Versailles, and, and getting it all signed, and what goes in and what comes out, and determining the political landscape of the world, frankly. Yes. And you do that through, you know, micromanaging how much influence you put on these issues, but what was really cool is that you have real negotiation between players at the table, so that you end up with you know, uh, these two guys over here are trying to like not help this one win, and so you end up with this extra meta layer of negotiation that, that make the game really dynamic. Well, actually, the the big one in this game was that the United States and um, and France needed Italy and Japan to sign the treaty. It was very important to us, and so we started working together to keep Italy and Japan happy. And that actually put, what put, put us, at least in this version of it, in first and second place. So that worked. So other than the values of the thing, the, the, the basic concept was perfect. And also, as you settle issues, I don't see how visible it is, you see these little fists. So as you settle an issue, you start creating unrest in the world, which then creates uprisings, which unsettles issues, and so it is demobilizing military units. And so there's really kind of a nice, but not a lot of it, but there's enough interaction with the military 
the uh, political influence, issues, regions, I think that all sort of worked well together. And I think it's pretty tight right now. Yeah, I felt like whilst the game has a lot of back and forth and struggle, there wasn't a lot of just mean take that. Yeah. You know, sometimes uh, uh, one of these kind of the unrest goes off and then, you know, one of your issues from your tableau that you've spent all that time acquiring, you might, you know, you might lose that to another player through a kind of a series of bidding, also very expensive. So there's this great resource management, but you're also just trying to cling on to your stuff. But you'll never be able to do that. There's always going to be people gunning for you, and so there's just a ton of nuance in this. Right, you might decide sometimes not to take a Balkan, win a Balkan issue because the Balkans is so unsteady that you may not be able to hold on to it. <laughs> or yeah. you're going to have to fight really hard to keep it. And I think that's something that this, what I really enjoyed is that you have this very small pool of political resources that are just cubes, and that's what you're using to influence these issues. But then there's other opportunities to use those, you know, if something comes up, that there's kind of randomly, you know, there's one of these unrest ones, uh, entry becomes available. You know, if you spent everything at the table, you can't get in on that extra action kind of as the sideshow. Yeah, managing your cubes, it, getting it, getting low on cubes or getting having no military uh, can also give you a huge disadvantage at, at certain times. Yeah, and I think the other extra layer as well was these strategy cards you talked about. It comes a point, not at the beginning of the game, but a yeah. few turns in. Um, there's these like kind of overarching strategy cards that yeah, like you for get instance, to choose. Like for instance, in this game, the U.S. picked 14 points. So you can see, and what happens is, in the beginning of the game, you deal out one more strategy card than players, and then when there's an uprising, after the first uprising, you actually now have to declare your strategy. And everybody sees it, so it's not hidden. And then, because there's all the you had newspapers, I mean, this was all in the open, what their agendas were. And then you actually have extra value for, certain plays will give you bigger points at the end, so there's a real strategy that, but you get those points for anybody's card, because you're setting a world stage. Yeah, and I thought that was cool, because you're trying to grab the points from the issues, but then you've got this overarching strategy that you've got to try and fit your issues into. So there might be things, and you might give people things to other people, knowing they'll pick things that'll give you advantage because of your strategy. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. How they're just a layer upon layer of strategy, whilst the gameplay is very simple. It's yeah, pretty much in a turn. Complex, but once in a while you'll do something military. It's optional. You'll do something military. There's only three choices: you're going to demobilize, deploy a military unit, get a military unit back. Back, in your turn, you're either going to put influence on issues, settle an issue, which is really the big moment in the game, or you're just going to recover resources from exhaustion. So that's all. And a turn could sometimes go. Your turn, if you're just re recovering um, tokens, could literally be you know, 10 seconds. So it moves yeah. around pretty quickly. Yeah, and that was something I enjoyed. You know, we played Churchill and Pericles, and sometimes the games can be quite long. I thought this one had a good push. Is not every turn takes an, an, you know, right. a long time. Every, every turn is not a life or death. When you play Pericles, it is designed to be almost every decision. We played a game yesterday, and the tension was you could cut it with a knife because every okay, we're going to flip that one up, and the tension of that was people, we loved it, but that is a you know analysis paralysis or people overthinking it or you know and and that's a different kind of game than yeah this this, this moved along in a really good clip i had a blast playing this um i know it's on the p500 list what, do we know approximately when people are going to be able to get their hands on this well okay so i would say that jeff and i will be basically done by early october and then you know it has to get a slot for the time that it goes into the art department with shipping and getting to the warehouse and going through customs and getting to people, I usually think it's like four months. From the day we hand in the art, it's like four months before you're in your hands. So if it's October and everything, and there's no strikes in ports and uh, you know the, the factory in Japan, uh, China stays on schedule and all this nonsense. So 10 plus, it'll be around the uh, first quarter of 19. 19. So, no certainly, pressure to certainly, certainly within the first six months of 19. That'd be great. And so, this plays with, we played with four players. How does the game scale with fewer players? Okay, so, if you play, you, 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 could, you definitely play with three. And Italy becomes a non, 
like a not NPC like Japan. And then if you play right now, you, we're working on the two player. You more or less you can play two player, but we're working on the rules and how you handle the third player. But I don't. I wouldn't. It's not useful to play with less than two two active sides. Yeah, and that's something that I thought was really good was the full player. Like it was fully dynamic with that. And I thought we got the most out of this with that many players. That's it plays very well. Actually, most of the this is actually only the. I don't know how many times Jess played it this way. I have to talk to him, but this is only the third time I played with four. We've been playing with three most of the time, so it works very, very well with three. Yeah, okay, that's good news. Yeah. So we'll show. Um, like we took a bunch of pictures. We'll kind of do a full write-up of all of what's here. Note that any of the pictures or anything you see here is yeah, pre-production right. company. You, you, you won't have any trouble believing that. Yeah, <laughs> but the gameplay itself, I can match that. I was having a total blast playing this, and it played very quickly. We played through the full deck, so it didn't even end early. Yeah, right. Every possible card, basically, and it was still it was two hours. It was just over two hours and thirty minutes, but I had to teach you how to play first. Yeah, which was incredibly easy. It was not complex to teach, really. That's good to know. So that's something to watch out. Of course, it's going to be coming out next year, hopefully. No, uh, it'll be out. It'll be out okay. in the first. I guarantee by the first half of '19, it'll be out. Maybe the first quarter, but definitely by the second quarter. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with us and teaching this. Uh, this is Versailles 1919. This is coming out from GNT Games next year. Um, thanks very much for tuning in.